you made it to level two, deeper questions leading to deeper answers. I'm Tomas Garza, and I'm here to help you decide to transform. I'll be setting the pace for the process to support your unfolding. Learn and commit to a practice that brings simplicity and then awareness of what is ready to be released. Join me now and allow the experience of a deeper sense of love. Hello and welcome to Decide to Transform. I'm Tomas Garza and welcome to episode five of Intentional Parenting with our very special guest, Arlene Wallace. Arlene was born in Jamaica and now resides in Ontario, Canada. She's the proud mother of Noah, age 23, an educator and a passionate advocate for all single parents and their children. And Arlene is soon to be published in the international compilation, Break Up to Wake Up, Journey Beyond the Now, coming out, soon to be released in November of 2020. And yay. Arlene, yes, yay is right. Welcome to Decide to Transform. It's a pleasure to have you again. Well, I thank you very much, Tomas, Lisa, and I feel very blessed to be here. Wonderful. And we're very blessed to have this conversation with you. And before we get into that, I do want to introduce and give a special shout out to my co-host, Lisa Berry. Lisa is a very good friend of mine and the host of Light on Living, the internet radio show on Ohm Times Radio, longtime holistic nutritionist, life coach, and well, if you've been listening to these shows, you'll know a lot of fun and a lot of energy. And this is a great topic. Lisa, welcome. It's great to have you back. Thank you so much. And I'm happy to be learning all of these tips and tricks and tools for intentional everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is intentional everything. And um, well, Lisa, you had some really, really interesting ideas come through for today's topic. But let's start off with those. All right. Well, because the book and your whole theme, Arlene, is intentional parenting, and I know that this whole your whole mission is to help others understand the importance of self care as it relates to their health, as it relates to their relationships, and really, if we don't do the self care, what that can lead to. And um, I know a little bit about your story, as does Tomas, but I would love for you to. Because as we unwrap what self-care is, I mean, you hear that all the time, self-care. Oh, yes, I do. I brush my teeth and I feed myself or I go to bed or, you know, but it's, it's so much deeper than that. And the consequences, unfortunately, can be a little heavier as well. So I thought we, we would, everybody would maybe connect and, and to know your story and to realize that, wow, Arlene really knows what she's talking about here because she's, there's a long road for you. So if you could share your story of your health. Um, and why self-care is so important to you and why you see that now. Oh, thank you, Lisa, for that intro. Um, you're absolutely right. I have been on a journey. Um, sometimes it literally just felt like just a valley, you know, with no end in sight. Um, where I am now, the reason I stress self-care is because of where I am right now. Self-care is so, so important. Because if you don't learn, if you don't acknowledge when you do need self-care, you are going to run yourself into the ground, into the danger zone and once you do that it takes just as long to recover in order to have self-care what one must do is to realize a the stress level that you're dealing with b the amount of hours that you work per se because if you 
overdo it and you don't stop to take a break, it will definitely affect you physically and it's harder to recover. So in regards to self-care, you've got to acknowledge your habits, you've got to acknowledge your patterns, and when you realize that you are overly fatigued, you have to stop and take a break. You have to just shut everything down. You've got to make sure that you're getting the proper nutrients at the proper time. And you've got to make sure, you have to make sure that you take time out for you. Do what makes you happy. If it's taking time out in solitude to read a book, go for a walk, go for a manicure for ladies, anything like that. <laughs> or even for men, do your nails, you know, because in that atmosphere, you're getting a massage. Either way, manicures, pedicures, just take care of you. Acknowledge that you are important and that you deserve it. Because in this culture, this North American culture, it is a rat race. It doesn't shut down. It just keeps going. You know? And if you strain your body like that, you will eventually harm your body. Mm -hmm. And take it from me, because I'm there. It takes way too much energy and um, strength and a longer time period to recover. Are you recovering right now or are you in that stage of recovery? Are you currently, yeah, like where are you with your health because of, of, self, of lack of self-care? Yeah. You're right, Lisa, right now I am in the state of recovery in the sense where um, I have to make sure that I do the dialysis nightly. Um, I've had my challenges. I've had my ups and downs. It hasn't been easy because some days are actually better than others. Um, sometimes there's pain. Sometimes there isn't. Um, so I'm just really grateful for the days that there isn't. And now what I'm learning that even though there are days that are not um, pleasant pain-wise, it's still a good day because I'm alive. Mm. I, 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 I have the strength. I find strength in, I find strength in God. I find strength in my family that are around me that when I'm weak, they all help me to be strong. Um, I am so blessed to have this inner circle. And funny enough, I can really admit that I did take them for granted, but not anymore. Now I value who they are and what they've done for me. I have, I got a line out of that. I got from granted to gratitude. Mm, yes. <laughs> yes, right. That's yes. absolutely right. <laughs> yes, and Arlene, we thought we would go into a little bit more detail here. You did mention dialysis. So for the yes. listeners who um, may be just tuning in to our series, would you mind taking us through physically what has happened for you as a result of everything that you just talked about, the lack of self-care? Absolutely. Right. Well, what? Uh, thank you for asking that question, Thomas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. Because I really want to emphasize stress. Stress, okay. they say, physicians say, it's a silent killer. And it absolutely is. Mm -hmm. Because stress, when you're overly stressed, 
and you do not balance, you do not have anything to ground you, or you don't recognize what you have that can ground you. Stress brings on dis-ease of the body. Dis-ease. Because you're not content, you're constantly thinking, you're restless, you don't give yourself the time to really figure out and make choices that will best help alleviate the situation. If you do not stop and figure out and have a vision for yourself, what you're going to do and how you're going to do it, you're constantly putting yourself again in danger. Mm -hmm. That word dis-ease is the root word for disease. So if you don't know how to manage your stress, eventually it will catch up to you. Me to the, where I am right now is due to the stress that I did not know how to balance. I did not know that it was even that serious, the stress level, because I did not acknowledge the signs that my body was giving me. I ignored those signs for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And that stress level, it just escalated and escalated. I didn't express to anybody what I was feeling. I kept everything inside. I isolated myself until the signs could not be ignored anymore. Okay. What happened was I had to be hospitalized because this whole kidney failure, it started with water retention. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm a very petite person. I'm usually like a size two, three, for example, very petite. I blew up, literally blew up like a balloon to almost 300 pounds, 200 and something pounds, 280, I think it was, when I had to be admitted into hospital. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Due to that, multiple things started to happen. Even at that point, I was still in denial. Wow. Because the doctors kept on saying that I needed a blood transfusion because my hemoglobin was extremely low. It was less than, I think it was about 60 when it should be at least 120 something. 100 to 120 mm. something is sufficient. Okay. And when he said that, I realized, oh, wow, that's why I couldn't even walk from parking from a parking lot to a building without feeling as though I was going to collapse. I still did not even take it as seriously. I didn't know what it was. I knew something was wrong but I still did not acknowledge. Mm -hmm. I went into the doctor's office this particular day where it was really bad because where I parked, I had to go up the staircases. Oh my gosh. And it took me so long to recover my breath. When I was in the doctor's office and they took my blood pressure he said to me he, right away that he wanted me to go straight to the hospital down the street and admit myself because he was very concerned. And so I did that with reluctance. I didn't even think they were going to admit me because, again, I did not think it was that serious. So when they wanted to admit me, 
or when they did admit me, because they had to, I was in emergency. The doctors came. They told me that I needed a blood transfusion because my hemoglobin was that low. I resisted and I resisted. I said no, because I didn't, to be honest, I didn't think I believed that much in the system in regards to blood transfusions with whatever was going on. So they said to me, it took two doctors. The first doctor told me the scenario, the situation. I still said, nope, nope, I'll be okay, I'll be okay. Yeah. Because normally Super anybody that knows me say that I'm very strong and I have it together, very independent. So I carried on that mindset. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, uh, the first doctor literally had gotten frustrated with me. He went, grabbed another doctor. The doctor, the second doctor was a younger doctor. And let me tell you, he just gave it to me straight. No. He said, Arlene, do you understand that if you don't get this blood transfusion, you will die? No. Yeah, because I couldn't breathe on my own, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like fully to full capacity. So when he said that, he said that with such realness, such, it was like an aha moment. And then I said, okay. Fast forwarding, the same thing happened because um, I was from hospitals to hospitals till finally I went down to Toronto General, which is one of the best hospitals. And while I was in Toronto General, they tried giving me a high dose of medication to try to release some of the water. They gave me up until the weekend. And believe me, I could not even, I couldn't walk. I couldn't stay in the bed for too long because my legs would just hurt really bad, like striking mm -hmm. pains. Mm -hmm. And the water, because I am a petite individual, because the water was so much, it just little droplets would literally come up from my calves. Water would come up from my calves because it had nowhere else to go. And that was so painful, not only physically, but just to see something like that, constantly having bandages around my, my legs, my lower legs, constantly, like I tell you, my mother, was phenomenal. She would constantly change those bandages. She was so attentive. Mm. And um, the thing is, seek the proper help when you need it. Because I called a friend who I thought she knew what she was doing. She gave me advice on how to stop the, the, the water coming out. I was supposed to put my feet in bucket in a bucket with something that's called Detzel, which is supposed to kill the germs. Mm -hmm. With that being said, it didn't stop. We continued doing it. I ended up getting like third degree burns on my legs from that chemical. Mm -hmm. So when I was in hospital and the doctor saw my legs, they actually called in a team that handles like from the burn unit and they had to dress my wound wheel week every other day until it went down to weekly until it finally stopped. Wow. Yeah. And if I had gone to the hospital when I first seen those signs, mm -hmm. I don't believe I would be in the situation to the degree that I am now. Yeah. Also, I like, again, I'm very grateful. When I was in the hospital with all the water and they knew that this is not me, 
and they gave me the weekend and all those medications to see if water would be released. A certain amount is what they were looking for. It wasn't released. Mm. I was still bloating. I wasn't um, going to the bathroom like I should. And they said, if there was no change, that's when they would have to put me on dialysis. I was very... I think I was such a bad patient. I was such a bad patient. <laughs> no. <laughs> because I was very reluctant and I swore up and down, I'm not doing it because that's going to be the end of me. Oh. I was praying because, again, miseducation is very dangerous. The reason I was very reluctant is because nothing like this has ever happened to me. The only person it happened to us, to, uh, happened with in my family was my aunt, which she ended up passing away. But however, she lived a very, very long life. She lived about 40 years after a kidney, trans, a kidney transplant. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. And so I thought about her and it just scared me. And then the miseducation that I got from people that are supposed to be in the medical field were like, oh, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You get dialysis and it's going to be the end of your life. You can't do anything. Hmm. So that's why I was very reluctant. And then come that Monday after the weekend, I didn't lose. I was hoping and praying. But then nothing happened. And so they told me that I would have to get dialysis till finally I had no choice in the matter. When they intubated me with the tube on the operating table, I literally was crying and I said, God, where are you? But at the end of the day, you know, when I think about that, I think how good, I think how good he is because God saved me because he brought me here for a reason. I'm a spiritual being living on this earth for a reason. This body is just to house the spirit so I can accomplish what my purpose is. And I feel very blessed that it is a blessing when I wake up because after all of that, I felt like Job in the scriptures okay. because of all the pain and, and everything that I experienced on a nightly basis. There were times where when I was that bloated and I couldn't breathe because they also said one of the reasons with all of that happening to my body, that I literally also had congestive heart failure. Oh. And one of the valves on my heart didn't close properly. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So for me to be alive here today, after the negligence, mm -hmm. I am very blessed. I, I'm so grateful. I wake up and I say, thank God. Thank God, because I must be blessed to still be here. You woke me up. So this is when I know, confirming that I have a purpose. Mm -hmm. first of all Arlene I have to say thank you so much for sharing that story because you can hear the trauma in it even yeah. as you're mm -hmm. reliving it so we certainly don't want you to sit in trauma to relive but it's <laughs> it was so valuable for you to share that though so the listeners could mm -hmm. I could feel you you know what you went through and even from the be, seeing the bandages on your legs that's a traumatic experience so oh yeah so thank you for first re 
re not reliving it, but sharing that with us and, and going through that so that we could all see. I love that you, there's two things that really came up that you said so that we can see what negligence there is when we don't have self-care. And yeah, also I love that you almost, I love your spirit that you almost couldn't um, resign yourself to being sick, but that you acknowledged and walked through the four pillars mm -hmm. of self-care in that story that we'll highlight. But I want to let Tomas say, <laughs> respond here. I was just like so pulled into the story. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Arlene, thank you again for, for sharing that. As we know, this, uh, this has been a major, major part of your life lately. Yes. And uh, thank you for again for walking us through that and for reliving that for our listeners. And yeah, uh, what uh, really stands out to me are, is that you walked us through what we're calling the four pillars of self-care mm -hmm. with that story. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you walked us through them and, and those are number one, awareness. Mm -hmm awareness of what's going on in our surroundings. And two, you talked about in great detail, and that's acknowledgement of areas mm -hmm. that could be addressed, right? That need attention, acknowledgement, as you, as you put it, of your patterns, of your habits, of your ways of operation. So acknowledgement. And three, mm -hmm. addressing. In other mm -hmm. words, giving the attention to the areas that need it, the application of, of action to that attention and then forth accepting which is asking for and, and receiving help and acknowledgement that we don't always have all the answers whether it's a medical solution or whether it's emotional or, or behavioral or all of the above whatever that is so awareness acknowledgement addressing yes and accepting yes and what I really felt there too, which was um, interesting that showed up for me is that what actually was kind of, or maybe standing in your way a little bit is you were identifying with, with you had, you were holding on to some identities. You had an identity that I, you were strong and you were never going to get sick, which is great. I love that yes. identity, but it was actually putting blinders on you for some of the cues and then to um, identify so much with I don't want to, I'm not my aunt. I am not, I'm not going to, I don't have what my aunt had, even though she lived like you were really identifying with how um, it, it was almost like a, when we get so stuck with identifying who we are, it can prevent us from seeing those patterns from seeing. Mm -hmm. everything. What do you think your identity is now? What do you, how do you see yourself now in, with, with living with self-care on a daily basis? Um, what I see myself or how I see myself now is that I'm still that independent person, but there are times where I do need help. And so I acknowledge that and accept that I need help. And I ask for that help because I can't do it on my own. Nobody can. No man is an island, and we all need each other. That's what we're here for. And I think that's what we need to understand. A true relationship has truth, respect, love, and adoration in it unconditionally. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of neat that self-care actually involves everyone. <laughs> It's like, I know, right? <laughs> self-care, but I need, I need others. Like we that's need right. others in self-care. And that's how, um, as a, as a parent, so intentional parenting must include self-care because right. you, you need to be there for others as mm -hmm. you know, Yeah. So recognizing mm -hmm. that you, your self-care is important. Yeah. I, Such an important point. Mm -hmm. I always say, and I recognize now and I clearly understand that you cannot suffer in silence. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, can you just say something on that? Suffering in silence. If we go back to your story there, when you, and I love that you shared that with you, you your stress, stress levels, uh, and you said stress is a silent killer, um, mm -hmm. and checking in with your, how, how could one now, who was in your shoes back then, 
realize that they are suffering, that they are stressed? How, what could they, what could you offer them to do to have the awareness, the first pillar? Well, first you have to literally acknowledge there's that word again mm -hmm. that it's too much for you to bear that there's too much on your plate you have to take the time to really admit that to really know that if you continue like this it's harmful mm -hmm. so what you must do is to really stop, reach out to someone, anyone that you have a connection with. Ask okay. for help. Yeah. Seek help. Seek and you will find. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, so critical. I think that's such an important point for, for parents and, and as well as mm -hmm. non-parents everywhere. I mean, all people, because what we're talking about is part of self-care is involving everyone else. So other people's self-care is going to involve you. What I'm really getting from this is this really an emphasis on all of our interrelationship. Mm-hmm. And what I love that word you use is consequences. There are consequences. Mm -hmm. And those consequences don't just rely on yourself because if you are a parent, those consequences extend into your child. Are you able to care for your child? Are you able to be there for your child? If, if like, that's a huge consequence, like your own health for sure. But then as Arlene, were you unable to be the mom you wanted to be, be the parent you wanted to be because of your, of these, of this consequence? Oh, definitely. When I was lying, even though my son is older, you know, there was a huge consequence, Thomas, Lisa, mm -hmm. because he was attending college at that time. It was his second semester when everything severely happened with me. First semester, he did really well. Second semester, because I was in and out of hospital, even being at home in the state or the condition that I was in, my son ended up not doing well at all. Second semester, every subject, his marks were low. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now he's fighting to get back into school. And um, it's challenging because of this COVID thing and because of sure. his last semester's mark, like every subject he did not, he failed in. Oh, he did, oh, uh-oh. Okay. Yeah, because it was in the, he was so focused on my health and helping me and he was so worried. He was so worried. And so that impacted negatively on his school, yeah. second semester. And you know what you mentioned, worry is one of those things that we have to, um, in the awareness pillar, yeah. recognize, ooh, I'm, yeah. there's worry going yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and an interesting point, you know, Noah is an adult, he's, he's 23, and this was happening mm -hmm. while he was in college. So I think that's an important point for uh, all parents is, is that uh, this is something that if you're a parent, you know, and well, if you're not, you still know, it never ends. Yeah. It, it, it extends never ends. and extends and extends. <laughs> Noah, yes. Going back to how I was, or how my circle looked at me mm -hmm. with that independence because I was constantly on the go, on the go. And I would not want to reach out. I was very, I never asked anybody for anything because I had the mentality. I don't want to ask anybody for anything. I could do this by myself. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, no one mm -hmm. never saw me cry. He never saw me 
weak in his eyes. So this was a big shocker for him. A bad, yeah. Yeah. That's actually, I like that, that um, you are able now to stand not on the complete other side, but more so on the other side <laughs> of um, all the things that you had said um, caused this or got you into this. Um, do, you, do you struggle in not falling back into old patterns anymore? Or do you believe there's been a transformation in how you, you have your self-care as a parent? Actually, to be honest, um, I do still struggle because I've had that mentality for so long that days when I feel really well, like I don't feel any symptoms at all, I'm still on the go, but I'm better because now I stop and I say, Arlene, no. You've done this and this all day, right? You've gone here, you've gone there, you've done this, this, and this. No, it's time to stop now. You've done enough. You do right. not want to go back. Yeah. Are you finding it easier to listen to that voice that says, Arlene, stop, stop it? Yes, I'm finding it easier and easier. Yeah, actually, yeah. Good, good, good. That sounds like self-care actually has a voice. So if we all yeah. acknowledge like, hey, there's a, a little voice in there and it's called self-care. And it's the one saying, oh, 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 this, I love that you did another A word. You took into account all of what you <laughs> have done. <laughs> and, and, and knowing that it's like when people have to set their limits, which are loving limits, we should actually coin that word, loving limits. And to say, like with me, I love tea. I think I could drink tea all day long. Long, but I also know that the caffeine level would just be <laughs> through the roof. So I have to take into account, whoop, you've already had, you know, two big yes. cups of tea. Yes. So it's self-care. It's like I, mm -hmm. I'm, and it's, it, it's those small things that matter because all those small things, if we don't listen to that voice, um, and, and I love that you were very honest. Thank you. That you said, I'm not perfect. I don't, I'm not just like, oh, yeah, I'm perfect now and self-care <laughs> queen. <laughs> you know, <it's>, <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's helpful for other people too. And another thing I do, Lisa Thomas, is I just, I talk to myself a lot now. Oh, yeah, I look yeah. in the mirror, mm -hmm. in the bathroom, and I say, Arlene, today is going to have, you're going to have a great day. You are going to have an amazing day. Mm -hmm. You are blessed to be a blessing today. So I, I love it. Yeah. I love it. That actually, I love, this is a perfect, this is a perfect finale because uh, what you just said, looking in the bathroom mirror, telling yourself you're going to have a great day. You mentioned the word vision earlier mm -hmm. and that you, um, vision of what it is that you, how you want to see yourself. And that is self-care too. And I love it. You actually for you forecasted, forecasted yeah. a great day. I'm going to have a great day and I'm going to have a great day because I'm going to stay within these limits, which I set for myself that I know the consequences are only goodness and wellness and health. That's right. That's right. I live by the standards that um, my aunt says all the time. Her belief is that, and I've mentioned it before, where when you're speaking words, you're speaking into someone's soul. So why not speak into your own soul? Words are powerful. Right. Yeah. I love that. I think that that would be the number one Arlene self-care tip, actually, is, is <laughs> speak to your soul with, in a self-care loving way. You have to. Yeah. Agreed, because all too often as human beings, we do not. No. Uh, yeah, I love that. Yeah, you're speaking into your own soul. Oh, mm -hmm. I love this. Okay. Well, Arlene, this has been a very wonderful and revealing episode here. And uh, we really, Lisa and I really thank you for taking us into the specifics of your journey, because we know that this is going to help so many people. Because this is something, whether someone is a parent or not, that we can all pay better, closer attention to in our own lives. And that is the critical topic of self-care. So Arlene, before we wrap up here, for those listening here to the show today, 
How can they reach you? Because you are a teacher and a passionate advocate for all single parents. How can people get a hold of you if they would like to contact you further? All right. So my cell phone number, which is the best way, is 416-738-6003. Okay. So that's 416-738-6003. That's a plus one on the area code for Canada. If you're dialing internationally, we've got international listeners. So people will be tuning in from all over the world. So plus one, 416-738-6003 to get a hold of Arlene. And well, this has been a pleasure, Arlene. Thank you again for joining Lisa and me today. Thank you for having me. This has been episode five in a series of six with Arlene Wallace, Intentional Parenting with Arlene Wallace. And this is Decide to Transform. So for my co-host, Lisa Berry, I'm Tomas Garza, and we'll be back with Arlene Wallace for another wonderful episode of heartfelt, intentional parenting. Everyone have a great day and thank you for tuning in. Mm -hmm.